and welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with Erin Swenlin with our all new Chart Wise Women show. And this is the show where we are here to what we are calling bridging the gap, sharing our expertise with you to bring you over to the proverbial other side so that you can successfully invest in these markets. It's a joy, certainly for me. I I'm sure for you as well, Erin, how are you? I'm doing great. Yes, it always is a joy. I, I was asked honestly just recently, so if you could have any job, whatever it would be, what would it be? And I said, I, I think it would just be this one. I mean, I love it so much. So I, I don't have not. this you know, great idea of like what else I'd want to do because I love doing this. I couldn't agree more. My youngest said to me, I was on the phone yesterday, she said, oh, back to the grind. And I thought, well, wow, what is, what is that? I felt I know. kind of bad. You know, it's uh, great to, to have, do something that you enjoy and then be able to share your knowledge. And that's what this show, of course, is all about. And each and every week we are going to have a main focus as to what we are going to share with you and then spread out beyond that. And this week, it's all about money flows and how you can get in front of where that strength is in the markets. And it will have some uh, something to do with sector. Sector rotation is going to be talked about. And I will let the cat out of the bag and tell you that the industry group and the sector that your stock is a part of is attributable to almost 50% of your price stocks, either appreciation or depreciation. So this topic is super, super important. And we look forward to sharing lots of little tips and tricks and ways that not only can you get in front of those groups that are under accumulation. But then from there, even more critically is to uncovering that top stock within that strong industry group. So lots of fun, uh, actually very in helpful information that we'll be sharing with you today. Absolutely. I think it's a, certainly a tool that needs to be in everybody's tool belt if you're getting ready to invest in the market. I mean, I think everybody knows that it's important to know what the market itself is doing as a foundation, but underlying would be knowing what sectors are leading because that can really tell you a lot also about what's going on in the market. Not only get you ahead of a trade, but also be uh, have a better understanding of where the market might be going and consequently whether you want to be invested or not. You're right. And with that, I am going to very quickly share my screen. And I thought it would be really helpful to start out by taking a look at the broader markets. I'm going to blow this little uh, this screen up a bit here. So we're looking at a daily price chart of the S&P 500. And quickly, I wanted to take us back to January. And you can see we've had these many periods. Uh, this most recent pullback was the lengthiest but each and every, there were nine pullbacks this year. And each time there was a different industry group that emerged and came back into favor. Back here, it was all about energy and financials. We did see tech get hit. So it was a year where paying attention to those money flows made all the difference if you are self-directed as an investor. So what I wanted to point out here again is this four to five week pullback and coming out of that, this is where this paying attention to the group strength is really going to make a tremendous difference. And so for my, I'm going to be sharing some of the ways again, that you can uncover that and get in front of that strength uh, so that during any next pullback or certainly even during uptrending periods, making sure that you're in that right area of the market so that you can outperform. I would like to just share uh, really quickly, we were talking about money flows and the market in general. And, you know, we have available to us on stock charts, the sector rotation, the article on it in chart school. And there's obviously a ton of information in chart school on every subject. But I think this is one that really, really requires your eyeballs. You really do need to take a look at this so that you can understand it in a, a more general way, but in, even in a more detailed way, which is what we're gonna talk to you about today. 
But I know we both have used this before from the Chart School article, and it basically is telling you uh, which sectors, you can see these on top, and when they tend to be the leaders, showing leadership, what it's telling you about the market in general. Now, this is, it does not always fit this particular um, chart, but it does give you kind of the, the general understanding about, you know, we often talk about aggressive sectors or growth sectors. Uh, then we also have, you know, value or defensive sectors. And so you'll see those over here. These are your more defensive areas of the market on this side, whereas over here, you're going to have your more aggressive moment, uh, sectors. And you can see underneath, it tells you, OK, when we're at a market bottom and getting ready to come out of that, leadership generally is going to come from these areas of the market. And certainly, um, while we're recording it now, that seems to be the case is we're seeing a lot of movement into that technology cyclicals discretionary area which tells us that we're probably in a good stead you know for the market to move forward but i think looking at rotation on uh, graphs similar to this is is really helpful yeah absolutely and having that as your backdrop as to where we are in the economic recovery period we're currently seeing uh as a this recording, the momentum in play, but there is a great anticipation that value stocks will come into play very soon. So having the ability to stay on top of that is going to really, again, uh, make the difference. We're starting to see some of those mega cap uh, caterpillar deer, those real value stocks uh, coming somewhat into favor. So being able to capitalize on that is uh, going to be helpful. So you were talking before the program about um, a horse race. <laughs> yes. Can you can you uh, expand on that? I thought that was such an excellent uh, way to describe sector rotation and how uh, what you do as far as finding and following those money flows. Yeah, absolutely. So what I was talking about is the fact that the S and P 500 is broken down into 11 sectors. And if you have that ability, I'll just quickly share my screen here for a moment. And you will want to, if you think of it as being 11 lanes in a horse race, and you want to make sure that you are in and on that strongest horse, that horse that's in the lead, that's leading the pack, leading the markets higher. And by so doing, I talked about that almost 50% attribution to that industry group. So you wanna make sure you're in that strongest area. So here are these 11 lanes, as you will, if you will, relative to a horse race, as well as the S&P 500. So quite simply using this candle glance on it daily, I've added an RSI, that's a relative strength indicator descending. So up here is going to be your stronger Horses. This is where you want to be focusing your research. You want to be overweighting in these particular areas. And then equally important, you don't want to be in that injured on that injured horse uh, mm -hmm. and that area of weakness. This is where Snap Match came out with poor numbers today. Uh, Facebook's been languishing. So this area is communication services. So just as important as getting on those strong horses, you want to make sure you're not riding a weak horse or a weak area of the broader markets. So, yeah, we uh, talked yeah. about money flows, and I know our producer was kind of like, well, What do you mean by money flows? Um, you know, as far as the market goes. And I know that for me, when we're talking about it, is, you know, as you're saying, getting on the right horse. So, you want to know which is the favorite where is all the money going right now because that's Absolutely. the favorite horse right mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. i think what we're talking about when we discuss our anchor point of money and flows the realist the reality and the beauty of uh looking at for instance these sectors and these uh candle glance charts is that unlike a horse race and you're betting, I'm not partial to that, but uh, I feel that the markets give you a lot more in the way of clues. You are you really provide it a lot if you know where to look. So that's uh, why we're here today to share with you ways that you can and just quite simply this view and taking a look because it's not just 
consumer discretionary and technology. Uh, I'm going to get more into healthcare and other areas as we move on. But we are seeing those value, those cyclical, the basic materials and industrials are creeping up from this lower position. So really just keeping an eye on this horse race and looking for those sectors that are starting to move here from the lower weaker quartiles into this forefront and stronger, it can really be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not overly hard. I think that's what we really want to get across to everyone who's watching our show, especially for those new traders and beginners or people who are just getting their feet wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's no need to complicate this process. So um, yeah. So how about uh, Aaron, you want to share some of your charts? This is our uh, chart share segment. If yes, you will. chart chat. Let's That's have a little it. chart chat here. <laughs> so you talked about the candle glance and I also have one here that I also will follow. So I'm not going to go over that. You covered that beautifully. But one of the ones that I think is interesting, and so I know we're going to talk a little bit more how to get to these uh, items, but right now I just want to talk about these items. And one of those is relative rotation graphs. Now, don't get, I know this looks very complicated, but honestly, it's really intuitive once you get the hang of uh, what you're looking at. So I'm going to actually move this into a daily version because I think the daily version gives us a much um, when we're going to look for a trade, uh, we need that information that's a little bit more honed in on the short term. So this is a relative rotation graph and you have green, which is leading, you have red, which is lagging. And in between you have yellow, so that's weakening. So you start here, you might end up here and then you end up lagging. But when you're coming out of lagging, now you're gonna move into this blue improving area. But you can see, literally we are getting rotation on this graph as far as the sector rotation goes and currently as of this taping consumer discretionary showing extraordinary strength and leading you can think of the the middle here it's the s p so the further away these sectors are from the center that's outperformance that's moving really far away from the S&P performing that much better than the S&P of course if it's lagging like it is here it's really underperforming the S&P especially when you look back here at XLC relatively speaking it's lagging and it's very far away from what the S&P is currently doing so I think that looking at this rotation can kind of give you that that visual I'm a very visual person obviously that's why I'm into charts about stocks but this is a really great way to just easily visualize that so once i visualize this and i kind of know where i want to be and clearly consumer discretionary is a big leader right now so i pulled up the xly chart that i have here i tried to make it nice and big i'm mainly going to talk about this window here and this window here, but you're welcome to take a peek at what's going on down here. But this, of course, is your price chart. Let me get my inspect tool off. There's no need to have that right on. Okay, so this is your price right here of XLY, the consumer discretionary. That's your restaurants and bars. That's there, you know, a lot of the um, uh, recreational. Um, I've I found business support services in there uh, as well. So you can see that when we look at this, which is the sector in relation to the S&P 500. So when we're looking at relative strength, so this tells you right here, you can see price was moving down. And so it was moving down, whereas the S&P we know was mainly moving upward. And so that's why you're seeing this relative strength line moving lower. So that's telling you, you don't want to be involved necessarily because it's not performing as well as our benchmark, the S&P. But notice back here, you can see that relative strength against the S&P started to really increase. And it did that moving mostly sideways, but this was our clue that there was something going on under the surface that we might want to pay attention to as far as consumer discretionary goes. So that is one way you can look at it visually as well on your chart is just by adding this um, relative strength line to your chart. And 
I will, if anyone takes a screenshot, they will see exactly how you can do that right here. It's a price indicator. And I just compare the symbol to the S&P. So that is relative strength as far as that sector. But of course we wanna delve in and look at an actual stock because now that I know, you know where do I wanna go uh, depending on it. This is actually Ford um, and it is obviously in the auto group. And I ended up with this thing on again, let me turn that off. So you can see here is Ford. Here is its industry group we were talking about. This is the price on the industry group. You can see where it started to take off here. Then I compare Ford to the industry group and I compare Ford to the S&P. So I have those same relative strength lines, right? So when I'm looking at this, I can see that, okay, Ford started to outperform the S&P starting back here. But when it is looking, when we're looking at it as far as the group, the group was starting to improve here, but Ford was actually relatively not as strong uh, in the group. So that also could clue you in that, okay, well, maybe I don't want to be in this particular auto because it's underperforming its group. Maybe I need to go look at a Tesla or something to that effect. So just to give you an idea of that. Very good. Thing. Very good. Wonderful. I know you have okay. quite a few, so... I do. I have a couple I'm going to share, so I'll get right to it because very much in line with your uh, tr line of thinking, of course, we are both in sync here. But what I thought I would do is uh, very start with taking a look at how very simply looking at those 11 sector charts can really get you in front of potential rotation ahead of it actually occurring. And this is a part of, for me, with my work with my MEM Edge report, I'm sharing charts directly from my report. So with healthcare, that's XLV is the ticker symbol, and it really dropped a lot further than the broader markets. So I was definitely on the prowl for when that eventual turnaround took place. So one of the first signs, and this is from my report back here in the beginning of October, I noted that the sector was beginning to what I call firm up. So it was no longer going down. It had a reversal attempt, failed, but then we had a lower high. So that's viewed as stabilization. And then as the group started to reverse and trend higher, this is when I started to uh, I really had a great watch list together and started adding stocks from there. So let's just take a quick look at a couple of names. This is another one directly from my MEM Edge report. When you see groups such as healthcare deteriorate to such an extent, you want to focus on stocks that are holding in well. This is Dexcom, DXCM, a diabetes related company. And they held support at that 50. They did not go down as much. This relative strength often points you toward those leadership stocks once the pressure on that group lifts. And in fact, we have seen the stock, it was uh, among the top five NASDAQ performers last week, this big exp explosive move in response to earnings, stock breaks out of a base and into an uptrend. And one other name in healthcare that we can take a look at it, another way that you're seeing that the healthcare industry group is beginning to move so this is in line with the healthcare sector turning positive. This is Merck, MRK. This stock also held in remarkably well, turned with the group, and then another explosive winner on earnings propelled into an uptrend. So I can do maybe a couple of other areas that I wanted to share with you because that pullback, and oftentimes pullbacks can be painful, but they can also be very rewarding if you can uh, have a system in place to help you get in front of those groups and those stocks. So this is XLK technology falling in line with the broader markets. But again, I'm wanting to see that reversal that's gonna be identified by a break back above that 50 day, simple moving average with your outside momentum indicators turning positive. That's gonna give me confirmation it's safe to get back into tech. So let's take a look at a sub industry grouping. I do traffic and growth stocks. So I have two areas, semiconductors and software that I am really keying in on very closely. 
and again, this is from my midweek report back here in October, where I identified that IGV, the software industry group, turned bullish. It turned bullish before the broader markets and also before the technology industry group. So again, this is going to be my leadership area. This is where I'm going to focus my energy to uncover big winning stocks. And in fact, um, Microsoft has gone on. I thought I perhaps had that chart. Uh, but that did, in fact, go on to be one of the winning names. It's, of course, a heavyweight in technology or in software. So here's a chart of Microsoft, another gap up, huge volume on earnings propelled into a nice uptrend earnings. We'll get into this with another show, I'm sure, but is, uh, from my work, the primary driver of a stock that gets into an uptrend. So, Aaron, I don't know if you had another uh, chart oh, no. to... I, I think I've given uh, all the charts I can give today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is really, I think, what the, we both wanted to share with you. Not only do you want to pay attention to that industry group overall, this is technology, but how about those underlying sub industry groupings. And we did take a look at IGV, for instance, and then from there, drilling down into the uh, top candidate I, uh, is the ETF for software stocks. So hopefully- You know, one of the, just a little aside, um, you know, one of the things I've noticed in the markets, oh, probably within the last year or so, is that, you know, sector rotation is important but we've had a lot of industry group rotation. So a lot of these sectors, maybe they're not seeing a lot of love, but by keeping your finger on the pulse of industry group rotation, um, that can help too. And I, I'm pretty sure that you can do that on stock charts on their dashboard, but I think we'll get to that shortly. Okay, yes. And this is within healthcare medical devices, so. Yes, uh, I'm liking healthcare too right now, I have to say. Yeah, that's that's where Dex, Dex, Dexcom came. So we are going to take a very brief break. Lots more to cover, so stick around. And welcome back. We are now going to do one of our favorite segments, and it's called Wisdom of the Week, where we share our wisdom as it relates to the topic of the day. Erin, I'm going to let you share your wisdom first. Um, basically, my wisdom of the week is going to be about following the money flows, which we talked about. And, you know, really what you're looking for is understanding market money flows. That's going to lay the foundation for a successful trade. So before you jump into a trade, you really need to know if the money is flowing in that direction already. I know a lot of people want to get in early on a move, but as momentum traders, we can tell you that your uh, success rate is probably going to be a little bit better. Maybe you don't get as much profit on the on it because you didn't get in quite as early, but your risk level goes way, way down. Well said. That is, I could not agree more with that statement. Yes, you're you're better served infinitely to wait until that reversal takes place and you have that confirmation. So yeah, my wisdom of the week, I spilled the beans a bit earlier, but it does bear repeating. And that is the fact that the industry group or sector that your stock is a part of is going to account for almost 50% of the movement in that stock. And this is stemming from a study that Bill O'Neill did. His book that I've alluded to in the past, best-selling book, uh, talks precisely about that. And I know for me, with my training while at William O'Neill, it was all about making sure that you were not only in that right correct sector, but also in the proper sub-industry grouping. And then from there, then you can drill down and, and get that winning stock. So that's the wisdom of the week. And from here, we can go ahead and share our action plan. This is where we suggest concepts and ways that you can uncover and learn more about sector rotation and really educate yourself further so that you can take advantage of that rotation when it takes place. So I will share my action plan and I'm gonna take uh, control of the screen here very quickly. 
But what I think is really important, as I mentioned earlier, I kind of gave it away too for mine, Mary Ellen, is that I think you really need to read the article on sector rotation on stock charts. So very quickly, you can just go to the little um, magnifying glass, type in sector rotation and go. And if we go right here to chart school articles, right there at the top is going to be that article that I just talked about. It has that chart that we talked about at the beginning, but it goes in a lot greater depth. So that would be my action plan is to go and read this uh, about sector rotation. There's been books and books, um, but this is a pretty uh, concise article that I think will give you what you need to know. Very good. Yes. And so my action plan, if you will, is going to be something that really won't take a lot of your time. It's time well spent. So here we are on this first interface page on stockcharts.com, and we're going to take you back to this sector summary report that you can have displayed if you wish on your front page. So we're going to drill down a little bit further from here and take a look at we talked about those sub industry groupings so sector summary just clicking on to that uh, what you can do is go ahead and take a look now this is one week from whatever given day you are viewing it it's not going to be monday to whatever day you are uh, but it can be very helpful so this is what we've been talking about as far as where the strength is so quite simply each and every week every friday take a look where has that outperformance been Aaron talked about consumer discretionary. I talked about tech and healthcare. So we are seeing continued strength in these areas. But how about drilling down beyond that? Where, where the heck is the strength in technology? Great to know that it's strong. So again, on a one-week basis, we are seeing a pop here in alt energy stocks. But beyond that, over the last five days, it is semiconductors and software. You can also do this stock charts technical rating similar to with under underlying individual stocks. And sure enough, software and semis show up as the strongest. One last click here because you want the best stock in the best group. So here we are and there's your list. So Erin, how about we take a minute here and talk about what else we do outside of our Chartwise Women show? Absolutely. So if you want to learn more about sector rotation, um, decisionpoint.com, I do a report every market day called the Decision Point Alert. And as part of that report every single market day, I show that relative rotation graph, that RRG and I do give you um, my opinion as to what's going on and what it, it's telling you. So if you're interested in more about that sector rotation, that is a very important piece of that report that I do every market day on decisionpoint.com. And I as well with meminvestmentresearch.com, I have a bi-weekly report and it is very much focused on where the sector strength is and then why I describe why that strength is there because it will be reasons as relates to a lack of an energy crunch globally, whatever that case may be. And then from there, I drill down and uncover those stocks that are poised and best positioned to benefit from that strength. So you can go ahead to my website and trial it. I have a special uh, offer. So that is it for this show. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.